Greetings from the voice of Alan Kardec. And welcome from the voice of the spirits. We're here today to take you on another audio journey through the Spirits book by Alan Kardec. Today's journey starts with the reading of our thoughts by spirits, questions 456 to 458. Then we will start the concealed influence of spirits on our thoughts and actions, questions 459 to 467. Enjoy. Enjoy. Question 456. Can spirit see everything we do? They can because you are constantly surrounded by them. Nonetheless, they see only those things to which they direct their attention. They are not concerned about things that do not interest them. Question 457. Can spirits know our most secret thoughts? They often know about what you would like to conceal, even from yourselves. Neither actions nor thoughts can be concealed from them. Subquestion 457. So it would be easier to conceal something from a person while he or she is alive than to do so after he or she has died. Certainly. And when you think you are well hidden, you often have a crowd of spirits around you, watching you. Question 458. What do spirits who surround and observe us think about us? That depends. Frivolous spirits laugh at the little annoyances they cause you, and they scoff at your impatience. Serious spirits, on the other hand, pity your imperfections, and try to help you. Question 459. Do spirits have any influence on our thoughts and actions? Their influence on you, in this regard, is greater than you suppose, for very frequently it is they who guide you. Question 460. Do we have our own thoughts plus others that are suggested to us? Your soul is a spirit who thinks by itself. Nevertheless, you must have noticed that many thoughts occur to you all at the same time with regard to the same subject, and that they frequently contradict one another. Well, they are always a combination of your own ideas and other spirits' ideas. And this is what renders you uncertain. You have several ideas within your mind, battling it out with each other. Question 461. How can we distinguish between our own thoughts and those suggested to us? When a thought is suggested to you, it is like a voice speaking to you. Your own thoughts are usually those that occur to you at first impulse. Actually, you should not concern yourselves with such a distinction, and it is often more useful not even to know about it. You act more freely. If you make the right decision, you will act more willingly. If you make the wrong one, your responsibility will be greater. Question 462. Do individuals of intelligence and genius always draw their ideas from within themselves? Their ideas sometimes arise from their own spirit, but frequently they are suggested to them by other spirits who deem them capable of understanding them and worthy of transmitting them. When they cannot find ideas within themselves, they appeal for inspiration. They are making an evocation without even suspecting it. Author's Remarks for Question 462 If it were useful for us to be able to distinguish between our own thoughts and those suggested to us, God would have given us the means to do so, just as God has given us the means to distinguish between day and night. But when a matter seems vague, it must be so for our own good. Question 463. It is sometimes said 
that the first impulse is always the best. Is this correct? It can be good or bad, according to the nature of the incarnate spirit. It is always good for the one who listens to good inspirations. Question 464. How can we tell if a suggested thought comes from a good or an evil spirit? Study the matter. Good spirits give only good advice. It is your responsibility to make the distinction. Question 465. For what purpose do imperfect spirits induce us to evil? To make you suffer as they themselves do. Subquestion 465a. Does it actually lessen their sufferings? No, but they do so anyway out of envy and seeing happier beings. Subquestion 465b. What kinds of suffering do they wish to inflict on us? Those that result from belonging to a lower order and from being far from God. Question 466. Why does God permit spirits to incite us to evil? Imperfect spirits are meant as instruments for testing the faith and constancy of individuals in the practice of the good. As a spirit, you must progress in the knowledge of the infinite, and you experience the trials of evil in order to arrive at the good. Our mission is to place you upon the upright path. When evil influences act on you, however, it is you yourself who call to them out of your desire for evil. Little evolved spirits come to help you in evil when you have the will to commit it. However, they cannot help you in evil except when you actually desire to indulge in it. If you are inclined to murder, very well. There will be a swarm of spirits who will maintain that thought in your mind. However, there will also be others who will try to influence you for good and this re-equalizes the balance, leaving you as master of yourself. Author's remarks for question 466. It is thus that God leaves to our conscience the choice of the course we must follow and the freedom to yield to either of the opposing influences acting on us. Question 467. Can people avoid the influence of spirits who incite them to evil? Yes, because they only attach themselves to those who solicit them with their desires or attract them with their thoughts. <laughs>